Star Wars is one of the biggest franchises in the world, but with a franchise as popular as Star Wars, along with it comes some ravenous fans. And Star Wars fans are ravenous. I mean, pretty much nobody agrees on anything other than the original trilogy is good. Like, that's about it. And this divisiveness is seen the most obviously in the response to Episode 8, The Last Jedi. If you look at the Rotten Tomatoes score, which is definitely the best representation of opinions anywhere, you can see that critics raved over this movie, but the fans, well, it's complicated. I'd say about half the fan base thinks that this is the worst Star Wars movie by far, and the other half think that it's the best by a mile, with little to no in between. Me personally, I've been more on the negative side of this argument. I didn't like a lot of The Last Jedi when I first saw it. Well, I did like The Last Jedi when I first saw it, but then I thought about it, and then I stopped liking it. But I decided that I should just give it another chance. I hadn't seen it in a few years, so I sought out to answer the question, was The Last Jedi really that bad? Short answer, no. Long answer, no. But it's not all that great either. Really, I think there are two ways that you need to look at this movie. First, you need to look at it from a filmmaking perspective. You know, how it works as a movie on its own, the technique, stuff like that. And in that camp, I think there's actually a lot of positives. In terms of how this movie is made, it's one of the best Star Wars movies in my opinion. It's nowhere near as experimental or visually impressive as the OT or some of the CGI in the prequels. Emphasis on some. But it just feels really refined. Like, visually, this feels like what Star Wars has been building up to. Like, if a movie makes me go, wow, the color grading of this shot is great, you've succeeded. I also love the set pieces in this movie. Crate is really damn cool. And I think the Canto Bite looks interesting, if nothing else. Why did the space camels follow Skyrim? The action is also really great. A big complaint that a lot of people throw at this movie is that it's boring, and I don't really agree. There isn't a ton of action, sure, but I think there's a good amount. I like the whole attacking the resistance scene in particular. Ryan Johnson is the king of dope-ass dogfight scenes. I mean, all of them are great. But even though this movie is really well made, there are a few missteps here and there, I think. Acting-wise, it's serviceable. Mark Hamill, Daisy Ridley, and Adam Driver all kill it. The rest of the cast, though? Eh. John Boyega especially doesn't do the greatest job, which I found weird because in the last movie, he was one of the best actors. Where'd the crystal critters go? Oh, brother, this guy stinks! The other big detriment to this movie is the dialogue. It's just kind of flimsy at points. There's a lot of MC humor. A lot of cheap jokes at inappropriate times that could land, but often don't. I think I genuinely take George Lucas's weird, overly world-buildy dialogue over this generic stuff. I did laugh quite a bit at the leaf bit, though. I, I thought that was funny. But the second way that we need to look at this movie is as a Star Wars movie, both as a sequel to The Force Awakens and as the eighth entry into the franchise. And all I have to say about how this movie works in that regard is... What the hell were they thinking? I mean, this movie completely changes or completely ignores what has been set up to this point. Let's start with how it succeeds The Force Awakens. Where do these characters go? How do they evolve? Let's start with Poe. Poe stays pretty much the same. His plotline is the least interesting in this movie by far, which really sucks because it was also the least interesting in the last movie. His relationship with Holdo kinda makes no sense. Like, whose side are we supposed to be on in this situation? We're led to be on Poe's side, naturally. You know, he's one of the main characters, right? But then Poe just... loses? In his own storyline? What? We were supposed to side with the character we just met the whole time? Why? Why go for this new character instead of the one that we should be focusing on? Rey's storyline is the best out of the protagonists in this movie very easily. Like, I love a good Jedi training arc. My main issue with her storyline is I just think she learns too much too quickly. This is a complaint that's been there ever since The Last Jedi came out, and a lot of defenders have brought up, Oh, well, Luke had even less training and went off to fight Darth Vader. What makes Rey any different? Well, let's count how many times Luke uses the Force after he leaves Yoda in The Empire Strikes back. One, two, yeah that's it. 
I don't feel like Rey struggles with learning how to use the Force enough. Like, sure, she fights her dark side, which I like and I think is done really well, but in terms of learning how to use the Force's powers, it just feels too easy for her. We're supposed to empathize with the protagonist and feel good when they accomplish a major milestone, but when they're kind of good at everything after, like, a weekend of training, it just feels kind of unrealistic. And with that unrealism, or lack of realism, I don't know how you say it, but there's a significant disconnect between the protagonist and the audience. I don't think Rey is unlikable at all. I truly do feel like a lot of the Rey hate is completely unjustifiable, and at points, a little bit sexist. I just think that as a protagonist, while she does work and can be effective, she's not as effective as she could be. But the worst continuation of what The Force Awakens set up is what they did with Finn in this movie. My boy was massacred. His plotline in Episode 7 was my favorite. He's the reason why I went back to that movie quite a bit after it came out. A stormtrooper deserter learning how to recognize the evil he's taken part of and how to stand his ground and fight when the going gets tough. That's such an amazing concept. And what is the very first thing that he does in this movie? He runs away. He tries to abandon the Resistance. The lessons that he learned in The Force Awakens were completely ignored and just... They're gone. It feels like a lot of what they wanted to do with Finn's storyline was replaced with a new character, Rose, who I also think that a lot of the hate against is just completely unjustifiable. I think that she would have been an interesting character, it's just hard to root for her when A, we don't really know her, and B, she's stealing the spotlight from a character we already are familiar with. I think the whole side quest that they go on is fine, it's serviceable at its worst, and kinda interesting at its best. I just think that this plotline would have been much better received if you just switched the roles of Finn and Rose. Like Finn, after learning how to be a hero, finds Rose in the hangar, trying to run away and desert the resistance after her sister died. Then, rather than a new character teaching a familiar character lessons he already knew, it's a familiar character growing by teaching a new character how to not make the same mistakes he did. All of the story beats can stay the same, but you just gotta change the dynamic of their relationship a little bit. Ryan Johnson seems to have a habit of overthrowing a familiar character's story in favor of a new character, which is just wrong. You shouldn't do that, Ryan. That's how you stunt the growth of a film trilogy, Ryan. And finally, the antagonist. Kylo Ren has the best storyline overall in this movie. His arc is really the only one that continues on naturally without any hiccups. He's essentially trying to stop being a Darth Vader clone, and he forges his own path forward after killing his dad. I love how he clearly regrets murdering his father, but he's so manipulated by Snoke and caught up in his own hubris by the end of it that he still tries to be evil. Another thing that a lot of people hated was the death of Snoke, and I actually don't mind how unceremonious it is. Yeah, it's anticlimactic, especially since he was advertised as the new emperor of these movies, but for what he represents in Kylo's storyline, you know, that manipulation and that sort of holding on to the past, I'm fine with him dying here. It's really good storytelling. If only it went somewhere interesting. I will have killed the last Jedi! Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! So we've established that this movie doesn't really follow The Force Awakens that well. Half of the characters get out unscathed, but how does this work for the old characters? The ones we knew from the 70s, the ones we grew up with, and the ones that we cherish? I do not care what anybody says, Luke Skywalker's character is torn apart and thrown into a wood chipper. This is my biggest problem with this movie by far. When we last saw Luke Skywalker, he was the epitome of hopefulness, the guy who would do anything to save his family, even if his family hated him. But in this movie, he is an ignorant, unfeeling piece of garbage. Like when he threw the lightsaber over his shoulder, I, I genuinely had a look of disgust on my face. That's not good. I agree with the argument that characters should change. Like, if Luke Skywalker was exactly like how we left him, I also wouldn't have liked it. But this drastic of a change is really difficult to pull off. And I just don't think this movie really pulls it off. First off, they don't really explain why he does what he does. Like, we get two or three different flashbacks to the event that changed Luke, which is fine, but it still doesn't really clear anything up. And then second off, he goes through all of these changes off camera, off screen. Changing this much fundamentally is something that is not caused by one bad night. It's something that realistically happens throughout like 30 some odd years of growth. But when we only ever see like an hour of those 30 some odd years of growth, we miss all of that growth that Luke went through. 
Have I said growth enough yet? I love what they did with Luke conceptually, the shining example of a hero just losing his faith in what he used to believe in. I just think that this movie fails at communicating that concept effectively. I think that his storyline in this movie, disregarding how he got here, is actually quite good. It's just that backstory is just the one thread that makes the entire thing unravel. Oh yeah, and then Leia's fine. She's not in it enough, but she has her moments. I know people don't like the whole Force Mary Poppins thing, but the Force has kind of always been a writing device to do whatever the writers want it to do, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. But Luke, though, no one's ever really gone, says the guy who almost murdered his nephew because he was having a bad dream. All in all, no. The Last Jedi really wasn't that bad. It's made fantastically, but the dialogue and acting has a couple of missteps here and there, and the real meat of this movie, the story, doesn't do it any favors when you look at it as a Star Wars fan. I think that if you're not a Star Wars fan, you'll probably love this movie. It stands on its own very well, and I'd probably go as far as to say that as a standalone sci-fi film, it's probably like a 7.5 to like an 8 out of 10. Like, it's pretty good. But as a Star Wars movie with how much it completely ignores a lot of the source material and just throws a wrench into the development of a new trilogy, it's probably closer to a 4. So I'm gonna compromise and safely say that The Last Jedi is like a 6 out of 10. I mean, it may be a piece of shit, but that gold plating is beautiful.